from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, or no, yes, 13 verses 1 through 13. The gift of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have a prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I know, will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And the speak of God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, um, before we see, we just want to ask um, all of you that um, about love, every time we read that, every time, personally, every time I read that um, Bible verse about First Corinthians, sometimes I switch my word, that word love, into my name personally. Instead of love is patient, I use the word, God is patient, God is kind. So, before we start our song, I just want to share that the Lord is always beautiful to us, to everyone, and He, was, he always give us um, blessings, strength, and new life. And if you want to join us, there's only like a um, four, four sentences that are lyrics for this word. Uh, it's, the Lord is beautiful, beautiful, Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life, carefully touching me, causing my eyes to see. Jesus is beautiful things of my life. So you can join us.
to make all things beautiful, even though there's a snow, extreme snow, extreme hotness of the weather, Jesus in all things makes beautiful. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you for the special music. Amen. And thank you, choir, for the wonderful music. Okay, please pray with me. God of love, God who made everything because of love. We come before you, we seek your face, we ask for your guidance and leading. That as we worship today, oh God, we'll be able to worship you with all sincerity. That we'll be able to join our prayers our petitions and to ask for your blessings. We ask, O oh God, that you turn your word into living bread and feed our hungry soul. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we are all familiar with this passage and uh, probably you're kind of wondering why I pick this uh, selection or this reading. Actually, this is part of the lectionary reading. The lectionary reading is like the list of scripture readings being read and observed in most mainline Christian bodies. So somehow, of course, this is one of those. But anyway, uh, in a couple of days, it's already February. So whenever we hear this reading, this passage, the love chapter, we think about Valentine's, right? We think about uh, someone that we love or somebody that we care about. And, and actually, maybe for most of us here might say we have heard this reading, this scripture reading many, many times in weddings. Actually, Debbie and I we had the same reading uh, at our wedding 31 and a half years ago. Wow. But let me talk about the uh, context and the background of this scripture reading. I would like to show you, this was a, actually a letter of Apostle Paul to the Christian community in Corinth. So believing that at that time he was in Ephesus in Turkey, that he wrote this letter to the uh, Christian community in Corinth, Greece. So I would like to show you uh, a few pictures here when we were in Corinth. Okay, <clears throat> as you can see, oh, I was looking at here. As you can see, that's the uh, Acro Corinthus this way, so that's in Corinth. All right, next please. Okay, those are some of the uh, uh, ruins of the city of Corinth. That was our group. Leslie was there somewhere. Debbie and I. Okay. Okay. Leslie, is that you in green? Okay. Is that blue? Okay. Okay, that uh, structure behind us, they call that brim. Uh, a place where, in the marketplace, where if you have some kind of announcement, that's where you stand. Now maybe this is what we call pulpit, but that's where they they stand and announce the uh, announcement addressing the crowd, the uh, market people. Next, please. <clears throat> okay. okay. Can you see the, uh, the cross symbol, right? Okay. Uh, remains of, of course, uh, a place uh, of worship, a place of worship for Christian uh, community. Thank you. <clears throat> So God is love, maybe we might say it is an old theology. What is God? Uh, God is love? Okay, so theology is understanding God. So it's how you understand God. So that's why if you believe that God is love, then that is your understanding of God. That is your theology of God. That's how you understand God. So God is love. Love. So in Corinth, actually, 
It was that city was reestablished around 44 BC. Around 44, 44 BC as a Roman colony. So the new city that was uh, reestablished flourished and became the administrative capital of the Roman province in Archaea, just outside Athens, Greece. So, <clears throat> so uh, Corinth actually being near the uh, port became a uh, center of business as well. So a lot of uh, what well, business going through, flowing through Corinth. Uh, so that's why that place became known as a wealthy, a very wealthy community. Yes, Romans, the, the Greeks, the Jews, Christians, all of them. It is kind of the whole community, regardless of what religious affiliation you belong. So they flourish. And this is the reason why Paul addressed the issue. <clears throat> So, yes, earlier we said that uh, we talked about that the scripture is about wedding. It's about relationship between a man and a woman or, or a couple who are in love with each other. So I will not be talking about explaining all of those uh, four types or kinds of love in Greek. As just to remind you, they have eros, that's the, uh, uh, the feeling, your love for the opposite sex, or for another person. Philia is a brotherly love, and the sporhe is love of things, and the other one is the agape, which is the love of God. And that's what I would like to focus on in this particular text. Love of God. <clears throat> so when Paul wrote this letter, while he was in Ephesus, Paul was so disturbed. Actually, because Christian community in Corinth was so different. They were like a really character. And that even Apostle Paul had no intention of going back. Because Christian, Christian community in Corinth were something. They were not of the same like any other Christian communities. And according to uh, the background, the uh, Christian community in Corinth, they were nasty. Wow. They were nasty people. Yes, they brag that they are wealthy, they are knowledgeable, maybe they could speak different languages, and, and all of that stuff. <clears throat> That's why Apostle Paul said, Wow. If uh, me, Paul, studied under Gamaliel, the best teacher of the time. I am a Roman citizen, I am a Jew, I can speak different languages, and if I can also speak the language of the angels, but if I do not have love, I am nothing. If I can do all things like this, things extraordinary, but if I do not have love, I am just like a gong or a clanging cymbal, just a noise, just like somebody. If, if, if Subasa would ask me, Pastor, would you like to play the piano? I'll say, yes, sure, why not? But it's going to be a nasty noise. <laughs> you, gotta, you need to uh, plug your ears. There's not going to be a melody, but it's just a noise. That's how Apostle Paul trying to describe. Yes, you have all the wealth you got. You got all the education you got. You live in the Roman colony considered to be the capital with a flourishing economy. But you do not have love. Your community is a nasty community that you always involve in a church fight. I've never heard of that anymore, right? So Paul could brag about anything else, but he pointed, if there is no love, we are nothing. So among the myriad of problems in Corinthian church, 
they were claiming about a spiritual superiority over the Bible. Wow. It happens. It happens. Sometimes we have this a feeling of a spiritual superiority over other brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and according to what happened in the faith community, they were um, not kind. That's why, okay, I will read that. Because they were not kind to each other. Because they were boastful and arrogant. Because they were rude. Because they always insist on their own way. They always carry resentful hearts. They always keep and rejoice about wrongdoings. Wow. That's why Apostle Paul said, and you even take your brothers and sisters to court, to public court. What a negative, a negative publicity about a community of Christians. <clears throat> they were some. So Apostle Paul was so upset about the uh, Christian community in Corinth. <clears throat> so, so that's why Paul was even insulted. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have the authority to speak the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that on my way, one day, I was on my way to Damascus? <coughs> And then to persecute the followers of the way. You know what happened? There was this blinding light. And then I felt. And then I heard a voice. So, so white. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus who you persecute. So Paul can brag about a lot of things. Even that experience that he might say. I have met Jesus, I talked to Jesus, and Jesus talked to me. He can grant all of that authority. And yet, the people in current, the Christian church and community in current, they insulted Paul and they rejected his authority. That was the kind of church they had in current. At the time, Saint Clement said in his first letter, "Why is it that you harbor strife, that you harbor strife, bad temper, dissension, schism, and quarreling? Do we not have one God, one Christ, one Spirit of grace, which was poured out on us?" Your schism has led many astray. It has made many despair. It has made many doubt. And it has distressed us all. Yet it goes on. It is disgrace disgraceful, exceedingly disgraceful, and unworthy of your Christian upbringing to have it reported that because of one or two individuals, the solid and ancient Christian church is in revolt against the leaders of the church. And according to St. Clement, that result is the Lord's, that the Lord's name is being blasphemed. Rome, centuries, many centuries ago, by St. Clement. So in Corinthians, the text that we just read, Agape is the word for love used in this word, in this passage. So, is it, so that's why whenever you hear this word again, it is not about a romantic relationship. It is not about a, a they live happily ever after. It is not about romance. It is about a reality of the body of Christ that they were meet each other. The community out there, that's the last thing they want to see. In a world that is living and fighting this pandemic, in a world where hatred is becoming the norm, where all of this disgraceful things 
has become coming to light. If spiritual gifts in themselves do not define our worth to God or to the church. In fact, apart from the expression of love, the spiritual gifts are of no value. Anything that we can brag about ourselves, anything that we can brag about what we can do, extraordinarily, but if we do not have the love of God, that is nothing. The church is supposed to be, according to Reverend Cindy Gregerson, he is, uh, she is the uh, director of ministries for the Minnesota Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. She said, the church is supposed to be an alternative to the culture. Meaning, if the culture there is judging each other and rejecting each other, the church must be a counter, a, a better alternative. We are to embody what the kingdom, kingdom of God looks like. God is love. And if we do not love our brother or sister whom we can see, then we cannot say we love God whom we cannot see. Love is the heart and root of who we are. It is our calling. It is what sets us apart. And they will know that we are Christians by our love. Church. Followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. People in the community, people out there are not attracted to beautiful stainless windows. That years, those years were gone. They are beautiful. They will say, wow, but people are not attracted to beautiful stainless windows. Towering steeples, padded pews. Air conditioned shirts. People are looking and longing for the kind of church, that kind that Jesus intended to be. A church for all people where the love of God abounds and prevails above our differences. People out there are looking for a church. A church that is more kind, more loving. More compassionate, a church that promotes justice and equality, a church that helps the poor and the needy, a church that is a safe sanctuary for all people. That is the kind of church that the people will be attracted to. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the past few years of pandemic. And as it continues into the present year, are you part of this pandemic? Yes. yes. I'll raise my two hands. The church must play a positive role. A place where the love of Christ is realized and the towering and towering above everything we do. The church is not about me, it is not about us. But the church is about the love of God to all people. Let us pray. Gracious God, there must be a very compelling reason why each year United Methodist Church is still here. He's standing, reaching out, doing the ministry of kindness, compassion, and justice. Yes, Lord, thank you for reminding us of that kind of church in Corinth. Yes, Lord, the people in the community are not attracted to a church just full of very intelligent people or highly educated people. The people out there are not just attracted to a beautiful building and sanctuary. But people out there are excited and will be attracted to learn more about Jesus who loves all people. Help us look at every day when we start. Yes, this is the time, pandemic time, where we work kindness, 
will be even more appreciated. Goodness, love, and hope. Thank you, Lord, in Christ's name.
God is good. All the time. Thank you. Just practicing. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Well, also, let us pray for the world, the rest of the world. The, the words or the, the uh, uh, rumors about war, uh, war and what's that? Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine. So uh, um, we pray that this is not going to happen. If they can avoid this. That's why some now I believe that if more countries will elect female presidents, <laughs> we're going to have less wars, I guess. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> so um, let us pray. Gracious God, you are good to us, even though at times we are not. You are always faithful when there are times we are not. You shower us with many blessings, but sometimes we are ungrateful. Forgive us, O oh God. Lord, we pray for one another. We carry and lift up each other's burden. We pray, O oh God, for Bob Brissy and his family, for the passing of his father last Sunday. Lord God, it's not easy to lose someone that we love so much. So we pray for the Brissy family, that as they mourn their loss, that you feel that emptiness with your presence. Embrace them, O oh God. Give them hope. Give them love. Lord, we also pray for what is happening in our communities and the rest of the world. Shootings here, different places, in different places, talks about wars. Lord God, have mercy upon us. Yes, Lord, we have never learned from history. We pray that that war in between Russia and the Ukraine, oh God, that will not happen. Save your people, oh God. Lord, we also pray for our children, our young people. We pray for your protection, keep them safe when they go to school or when they go out to play. Protect them, oh Lord God. We pray for our parents, grandparents, for everyone who provides nurture and care to these little ones, give them more love, more patience, more compassion. We pray, O oh God, for the rest of the world, the leaders of the nations. Yes, Lord, give them wisdom. Let your love prevail. We pray, O oh God, for this pandemic, that, Lord, this will come to a stop. But Lord, we will overcome this pandemic, this virus. And we pray for those who lost their loved ones through this virus, oh God. Lord, give them hope. Embrace them and love them even more. Thank you, oh God, for Easter. We have a role that you have set for us. Help us to make it happen. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. To the one who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
that's really amazing because God made all of us different. <laughs> Not to be, say, uh, better than others because there is beauty in, in our differences. Right? And we learn from each other. So, so that's why uh, the call is we just don't want to be different from others, but how to make a difference in the life of others. That's a good call, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, let us pray. Let's follow the circle. We don't want to be in the middle. Okay, Lord? Okay, let us pray. Let us hold our hands. Let us close our eyes and bow our head. And let us talk with Jesus. Okay? Jesus, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. Thank you. Thank you. For leading us. For leading us. And we pray. And we pray. That you always guide us. And protect us. And protect us. When we go to school. When we go to school. When we play outside. When we play outside. And help us. And help us. When we also help at home. In Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Amen. I did hear you say that part. You <coughs> help at home. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you. Bye.
by His name. Amen. 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 People of God, go in peace. All of us, we were created because of God's love. You carry, you carry, we carry the DNA of God. That is love. And we are capable to share that to others who are in need. Go, and now may the peace of Christ which passes all understanding shall keep our hearts and our minds in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.